Okay, we're here today with Neil Lester, and he is the Dean of Humanities in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. He's also a Foundation Professor of English, and he is the coordinator of the Organizing Committee for the Project Humanities Initiative at ASU. Welcome to the podcast, Neil. Thank you very much for inviting me. Tell us how the concept behind Project Humanities evolved into what it is now. Well, about a year ago, um, I was appointed Dean of Humanities, having chaired the English Department for six years, and um, President Crow had seen a Year of the Humanities idea at another institution and thought that it would be a wonderful way of talking about humanities in the same breath that we talk about technology and sciences. So he proposed that we do here at ASU something similar. And so I looked at a couple of models because not many universities are doing this as a year-long series of events, activities, and performances. And it was clear to me that that particular university where they had the Year of the Humanities had, in my opinion, sort of thrown a lot of humanities things together. And what I wanted to do was to do something similar but give it a sense of coherence sure. and to recognize that this was not just the Tempe campus but the other three campuses as well. So part of the initiative was to say, what's going on in humanities in a way that can involve people across disciplines, across schools, and across campuses? How would you define the humanities? Well, you know what I've, what I've found out as the Dean of Humanities is that rather than leading with a definition of humanities, which often becomes quite slippery, because we, we fall back into disciplines and then we start listing disciplines. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it now as I'm telling you that I don't do. <laughs> but the National Endowment for the Humanities does this. It lists those disciplines, English and history and philosophy and religious studies. And while that may be helpful to some people, I haven't found it helpful in terms of talking about what I like to think of as everyday humanities. Rather than talking about definitions, I'd like to define humanities by showing what it is that humanities do. And what I like to talk about is the extent to which humanities gives us the tools and the strategies to talk, to listen, and to connect. And I'm thinking of those three things quite broadly. So humanities is that which exists between the moment we're born and the moment that we die, and our efforts to make sense of our experiences, to document our experiences, and to connect with others, that's humanities. That's an amazingly broad definition, isn't it? It's, it's broad, but it's, it's also all-encompassing, but not in a way that every single thing constitutes humanities. Okay. Humanities is a study of. Humanities is the ability to connect with people on a level that allows us to grow and to understand and make sense of things that we can't make sense of. Can you give us a brief idea of the range of activities and events that have been hosted under Project Humanities umbrella this year? Absolutely. Uh, well, I've been very excited uh, because as the year has unfolded, uh, lots of organizations and departments and schools have provided their events as part of the humanities umbrella. One of the things that's important about Project Humanities is that we're not necessarily starting new things. What we're doing is we're trying to make sense and to bring order to what already exists. So the university funds a portion of this such that we can bring in four or five major events that punctuate the events that are happening every day. And so it's been very exciting to see during the launch of this, and keep in mind it's not quite a year old yet. It started in February of 2011. And we've actually done a variety of activities from workshops to lectures to performances during this kickoff that was uh, back in October. Um, and we had everything from demonstrations of various American music genres, uh, barbershop, blues, jazz. So it was not just performances, but discussions of those performances and historical threads that link those performances. So we've had everything from blues on the, at the MU, which was mm -hmm. quite wonderful. A local blues band was at the MU during the lunch hour and to watch students, staff, and faculty members come up and just groove with the music but also interact with the performers was an experience I had never witnessed at ASU. Uh, we've also had uh, the students organize something called Humanities Through the Senses. So it was a way out at the MU again 
of having folks pass through as people were coming and going and having them respond to such questions as, what does Arizona smell like? Uh, what does Arizona taste like? And we had a mother of a student uh, make homemade salsa to have people get a sense of when we talk about the Southwest, we talk about salsa and chips. All of that was to put emphasis on humanities and this, this theme that we have um, as part of this first phase called Perspectives on Place. Why don't we um, talk a little bit more about that, that theme of place, which the organizing committee chose as the theme for mm-hmm. this first year of the project. Well, we, we tried to find a way that allowed almost everybody to have something to say about the sense of place. And as we, those who are on the steering committee for um, the initiative, thought about a year ago, was what is there about Arizona that connects us? And in many ways, many who were sitting at the table were from other places. We recognized how one of the first ways that we connect with each other is to say, well, where did you go to school? Where were you born? Where are you from? So place geographically became very important. Place was also bigger than sort of geographical place because ASU as a new American university or the model of a new American university is trying to create a new place in terms of what uh, our education can look like and be like. So it was a sense of, you know, where is ASU in the rankings? Where is ASU globally in terms of what we are trying to do to create citizens who go out into the world and help make this, this world a better place? We also were very curious about what attention was being paid to Arizona at the time through the negative headlines. And this was the time of SB 1070. It was also important to note that the narrative here at ASU is a slightly different narrative than the narratives that were being broadcast in the headlines where humanities programs were being cut. And that was a different kind of narrative. We wanted to say and want to say that humanities has a central place here at Arizona among these other things that we value and appreciate and expect our students and want our students to be uh, invested in. Have you guys selected a theme for next year? You know, we have an exhausted place, but there are a number of, of ideas that are being bandied about. What we want, though, is to make sure that whatever topic is just an umbrella, if people are looking at this project as a coherent, unified initiative, then we want there to be a theme that unifies. So we've looked at everything from truth to death and dying or extending perspectives on place in some new directions, particularly when it comes to science and technology and digitalization. I know that the project has a huge investment in terms of involvement from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. I was wondering how you've involved other schools you know, what the, what the participation has looked like. Well, one of the things that I, that I have to make clear when I talk about the project is that it is not a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences initiative. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm coordinating it, uh, my organizing committee, my steering committee, has members from other campuses. In fact, in the very initial thinking, um, that involved the d- deans from two of the other campuses, the downtown campus as well as ASU West. And we have made a concerted effort to bring in individuals in the planning stages such that we could have activities going on at all the campuses that's parallel rather than compete with each other. So it's been very nice to see a lot of attention from the downtown campus who participated in the launch. Uh, they have uh, created lots of interesting events. So what it, was, what it allowed us to do is to see that lots of different activities were going on on each campus that were specific to the identity of the campus. And so that's been very exciting. Well, what has surprised you the most about the community response to the project? That people are actually saying humanities and, and conveying some sense of ownership, that there's not this real... Um, kind of dazed look on people's eyes when you say the word humanities. So what has surprised me is how wonderfully excited people have been about the programs. And I say that, for example, related to the first event we had, which was an event at the Tempe Center for the Arts with Sherman Alexi, who's a poet and author and a screenwriter. And the audience was quite diverse uh, generationally as well as uh, culturally and ethnically diverse. 
and it was full to capacity, and people were excited about it. Uh, in fact, people are still buzzing about Sherman Alexi. What we've done is try to bring people together who ordinarily wouldn't be together. And the event that we had with the American Music Exploration in Old Main on a Saturday afternoon had people lined up. And this was, this was a free event for attendees where we looked at how rock and barbershop and gospel intersected in ways that those audiences would have never come together to realize. And then the last event that we had where people were spilled out of the door was the Nikki Giovanni event where she talked about the role of poetry and how we need to have the courage to look for and accept truth, and poetry is one vehicle through which to achieve that. There were upwards of 400 people with about 75 to 100 people waiting to get in. That's what inspires me, and that's what makes me think that there is a thirst out there for what we're doing. And it's, it's not to say that there aren't other events that draw that. Clearly there are. But the fact that this is under the umbrella of humanities inspires me and gives me a little more hope to say that we really can sort of bring people together to talk about the things that unite us and not necessarily focus so much on the boxes that keep us separated. Tell us how um, alumni listeners out there can become involved with Project Humanities. Well, one of the things that, that uh, all listeners can do is to go to our website, humanities.asu.edu, and to look around and see what's going on, and then send me a note and a comment about how you would like to be involved and what kinds of things you might be interested in seeing happen during this project. We have this little campaign that we call Friends of Project Humanities and Project Humanities in Many Places, oh. a play on the ASU in many places, one university in many places. And we have a T-shirt that has become quite popular. You asked me earlier about what surprised me, and what has surprised me is that people really like this T-shirt. Alums can tell me exactly how you'd like to be involved, and I'd love for, for alums, wherever you are, to get one of our shirts and then take a picture so that we can call you one of our friends. It really does make an impact to see real people uh, wearing these shirts and also recognizing that humanities in some way connects with what you're doing out there. We'd like to hear those stories, and I really want a robust alumni perspectives uh, represented on the site as well. Well, what's your hope for the long-term impact of this project? Well, my, my hope is that we will, uh, most immediately, is that we will, we will get the, um, the external funding to continue it, because we do know that these can be wonderful ideas, but unless they're grounded in some sort of uh, tangible resources, then, then the quality and the consistency may not be what we had envisioned. But there are all kinds of specific things that we're looking forward to in terms of creating through this project. We want to propose uh, a humanities-infused undergraduate curriculum. We want to come up with um, conferences for undergraduate students. Uh, we want to look at humanities in those unexpected places, so humanities scholars and students are not just talking to each other. We want journals, we want a think tank, we want an advisory board, we want this campus and this state buzzing with excitement about humanities. Was well, there anything else you'd like listeners to know? This is not a script that I'm writing, uh, and I think to witness any of our programs um, is to witness humanities in action. And as my colleague, Dr. Sally Kitch, who directs the Institute for Humanities Research, says, the most important way to define humanities is to do humanities. Neil, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited. To learn more about Project Humanities, visit humanities.asu.edu. Project Humanities is featured in the December 2011 issue of ASU Magazine. You can access the magazine by visiting alumni asu.edu, clicking on the News tab at the top of the page, then choosing ASU Magazine from the drop-down menu. The Alumni Experience is a production of the ASU Alumni Association. Portions of this podcast were recorded in the Grassroots Studio in the School of Life Sciences, which is a division of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences located on the Tempe campus of Arizona State University.